I'd like to introduce you all to Felix, who uh, is being a great member of our community, uh, advising uh, companies for many years, and effectively one of the smartest people we've, we've met in a very long time, uh, and who's been so kind today to uh, start the, the evening with a presentation that uh, hopefully will give a lot of value to all of you coming here, uh, both founders uh, and people looking potentially to run a company, uh, and if not, and of course also operators uh, dealing with founders on a daily basis. Um, so Felix, do you wanna let us know a little bit about what you're gonna talk about today? Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's going to be about how to help founders and companies express their story better and phrase their opportunity, right? Absolutely. Um, and much like everybody else at uh, Silicon Roundabout, I've, I've been involved with startups. I've had startups myself. And um, coming from a sort of technical background uh, in, in terms of software engineering and mathematics, it's often um, the case that we understand the, the technical aspects really well. And so we're very excited to talk about how wonderful the product is in, in terms of the science and the technology. Unfortunately, um, we need to uh, explain this to people who are going to be using it. And that means coming, uh, explaining it in, in, in English and explaining it using stories and things that are relevant to people as opposed to um, uh, thinking in terms of the audience that may be experts in, in data science or machine learning or something like that. So it's really my, my experience, the lessons I've learned along the way. So I'm just sharing the lessons. I'm not sort of saying this is, I'm not trying to lecture. I'm not trying to suggest this is what you should do. I'm just sort of sharing what I've, I've experienced. Great. So, uh, try it out. I think you should be able to share your screen and uh, whenever you're ready, we're all years. Uh, I'm going to sit back, relax and enjoy a great presentation. I mean, I had a, a peek through it, but uh, deliver from you is always a pleasure. Oh, great. Thanks. Oops. Let's start here. By the, by the way, a quick note for everyone in the audience. Uh, if you have any questions for Felix or for startups um, that are going to present afterwards feel free to use the q a in the um in the bar below and uh after the startups finish their presentations i uh, will sit down for a panel uh so we'll start to answer questions in order uh so you don't need to wait necessarily until the end you can put them there now as they can pop in your head and then we'll start to answer them after the startups presentations felix uh, the webinar is all yours. Thank you. So I basically put together my top five lessons that I go through myself when I'm thinking in terms of products or startups or helping startups. Um, the first one is invent or innovate. And uh, I really like the definition that Alan Kay uh, used in one of his presentations where he was talking to some people at Silicon Valley and he said innovation is taking an idea into the marketplace uh, whereas an invention is what we did at Xerox Park. So for all of those who are coming through from academia with, with master's degrees and PhDs, um, we're so used to invention in, in terms of finding new discoveries. But that's a very different skill set compared to what you need to do in terms of innovation, which is essentially what Steve Jobs did. If you have a look at what Steve Jobs did, he really didn't invent anything. He just understood people. So uh, the, uh, for me, the distinction is, is important. Um, the second thing I find very useful is to write a mantra. And a mantra is just three or four words that, is, that essentially has meaning for the people that I'm going to um, express this statement. And it's really reaching out to the hearts rather than the minds. So Guy Kawasaki, who worked with Steve Jobs at Apple, 
he defines it as a three or four word uh, mantra that explains meaning to, to, for your startup. So this explains meaning in terms of your company, your product, or your service. Um, and, a, and an example he gives is for Google, which says, uh, democratize uh, information. He's got some other examples. If you, if you Google Guy Kawasaki, you, you find some terrific uh, uh, videos on YouTube. Um, this for me is, is really quite critical because it helps me to, the, at the very early stages, to realize, do I actually have anything um, that I can turn into a product, a service, or even a company? I've got a few slides on value proposition, which is the real heart of what it is that I'm trying to do. And the value proposition has to be a very simple way of telling a story of how you add value to the particular sector, to the clients or customers that you have in mind. And I feel coming out of academia or perhaps uh, if you've been working in industry as a developer for 10 years and haven't really had the chance to interact with customers, because um, typically um, companies don't really like to let developers interact with the customers. Um, this is quite a difficult thing to learn. It, it's, it's difficult in the sense of conceptually, but it's actually easy once you get used to sort of iterating through it. It's not a one shot thing. It's very much like an agile uh, approach. And um, the person who gave me the definition of when I was in, uh, in, in the US was Bill Reichert, who was uh, Guy Kawasaki's business partner at the Garage Technology Ventures. And you can see the definition for yourself. It's to articulate something that's exciting, you know. Um, so in particular, if you're trying to convince family members or friends to, to come up with some bootstrapping cash, you have to get them excited. There's no point in giving them a technical definition um, and saying, well, could I borrow 5,000 pounds, please? So th there are four things that are really critical for a value proposition. The context, um, which states what it is that you do better than anyone else. Um, the benefits you bring. What it, what's the central idea and who is it aimed for? How do you differentiate yourself from everybody else that's in the same marketplace? And finally, this is the, the tricky one, particularly for us developers and technical people, is really to engage with the people that we're, we're speaking with and give them a sort of call for action. You know, here's, here's the story I've told. Isn't this, this wonderful? You can collect all your contacts into one place and, and you won't have to worry about, is it in the CRM? Is it in my email? Is it on my LinkedIn contact? You will just have one thing. So it's something that really talks to the pain that people are feeling. Um, I was actually going to call my talk, uh, Build It and They Will Come. Um, in my experience, um, that's not true. I've, I've suffered a couple of times in solving quite difficult problems and being really excited, thinking, you know, this is going to be terrific. In particular, um, the, the one that I carry the most scars was the fingerprint recognition back in 92. We developed a proof of concept hardware, software, um, and believe that fingerprint recognition was, was futuristic, you know, biometrics. We could see how it could be used. Um, unfortunately, the marketplace didn't. And they didn't for another 10 years. It, it became very popular when 9-11 took place. So that there are stories like this of, of, you know, imagining what a wonderful solution it would be and, and believing that you go out there and you sell it. Um, over the years, I've, I've come to shy away from that and talk to the customers themselves and listen, because they will tell you exactly what they need. And then if you go and build it, you don't have to convince them this is really good because that it's a pain they're feeling anyway. Um, during some of the presentations, people have told me, but Steve Jobs used to create markets. If you listen to what Steve Jobs actually says, 
Um, and I've included the, uh, the link. So if anybody um, uh, gets hold of this presentation, they can have a look at, or you can just uh, Google on YouTube. Um, his business strategy was to start with the customer and work backwards. And this is something he, he adopted once he, he came back to Apple. Um, so even Steve Jobs didn't create the customers or, 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 or the marketplace. He really was excellent at understanding what they needed and developing something to make their lives more pleasant and um, to get them excited. Um, the one thing I found very useful in terms of business model is um, the canvas developed by someone called Alexander Erstevogler. Uh, he's the, the author of Business Model Generation. And I've given a screenshot of um, one of the, um, the sort of boards that he uses. And again, there, there are lots of tutorials on the website. Now, I'm not suggesting that you replace business plans with this, but this is really for you to work through your idea and to figure out, do I have a, a value proposition? Who are my customers? What's my revenue likely to be? Who do I need to partner with? What's it gonna cost? And what other relationships do I need to build to actually get this thing into the marketplace and generating, um, generating value? And again, you know, this is something that um, you can iterate through and I find it really useful because I can take screenshots and, and um, sort of almost keep a, like a, a calendar of, of the thoughts that I had and how they evolved so that I don't go back and make the same mistake uh, that I made six months ago. So I find this very useful in trying to ensure that the idea that I have will actually work once it's in the wild. And uh, finally, the, the, the one thing that sometimes I've fallen into and I've seen other technical people fall into is, is you believe you're a team of one. And um, uh, again, you know, drawing from Guy Kawasaki, you need a minimum of three people. You need someone to build something. You need someone to sell it and an adult to get out there and collect the money. So, um, and they, they need to believe in, in, in the vision that you have and the, uh, the venture you're gonna be uh, embarking on. So I think that a minimum of three, and if you're a startup, then that's a good place to start. Finally, I, I really have gained a lot of value from reading The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. Um, and prior to that, I've read some of his other books because I'm of the vintage when he was uh, actually uh, an evangelist at Apple and he wrote The Apple Way. So this is going back into the sort of mid to late eighties that I've been following him. And he's always had good advice and I enjoy his presentations. So that's my experience. I hope that there is something that you can take away from it and use in your own startups.